Hi, and welcome to the 101 Earth Observation Virtual Lecture Series. This series is delivered by the Satellite Applications Catapult in partnership with Wild Labs. This lecture is about two specific missions, the Sentinel and the Landsat mission. Sentinel missions, um, so this is part of the whole concept of, uh, of mission from the European Space uh, Agency, also called Copernicus. So there are different, different sensors here uh, that, that they are named with numbers. So from Sentinel-1 to Sentinel-6. Those specific missions, they have different technology, uh, such as radar, uh, optical, um, atmospheric, altimetry, and so on. We will see this more in detail in the next few slides. Sentinel-1. Sentinel-1, uh, it's a SAR mission with a spatial resolution of about 20 by 5 meters and a temporal resolution of 6 to 12 days. The SWOT width is quite large, so we are talking of uh, 250 uh, kilometers. Main applications uh, are listed there. Um, again, we are moving from uh, monitoring sea ice, land ice, oil spill, land use change, land deformation, support to emergency, flooding, earthquakes, and so on. All the data is publicly available, and uh, it's quite uh, impressive to see that at the end of 2020, about 6 million products have been generated and made available for download, with a total of 10 petabytes. More than 30 million Sentinel-1 product downloads have been made by users, represented 40 petabytes. Sentinel-2 is the multispectral mission of um, of, of, of the Sentinels. So the spatial resolution depends on the band, uh, 10 to 60 meters. We will see a bit more in detail. A temporary resolution, five days, what uh, with 290 kilometers. Main application, there they also vary here from agriculture to forest, disaster mapping, uh, uh, water quality, and so on. As of July 2020, 20 million products have been generated and made available for download with a total of 10 petabytes. So as you see, we are talking of very large amount of data. I move uh, to the Landsat mission because it's, it's comparable, let's say, to Sentinel-2. So uh, Landsat is again a multispectral, multispectral mission. Landsat is the pillar of remote sensing. So um, we can say that almost everything started with, with, with it. So we can go back in the 70s with Landsat 1 and um, that there is, a, there is an evolution of, sent, of Landsat sensors up to Landsat 9, which has been launched and made available, uh, you know, that has been made available recently. In this figure, um, yeah, we can see also, also Landsat, Landsat 9. Um, so there is a continuity of data here from the 70s to, to nowadays with only a part in the middle with some um, issues on, on the sensors with Landsat 7 uh, where continuity um, uh, has not been actually uh, maintained for that specific uh, sensors, but for uh, previous sensors. Um, Google Earth. Google Earth was launched in 2005 uh, with satellite imagery from the Landsat 7 mission. So we almost all know what is Google Earth and uh, um, that specific mission is used in Google Earth to represent data. Google Earth was democratizing remote sensing by having uh, like a view of the Earth and like an easy, let's say also, uh, you know, manipulation and an easy, uh, you know, um, description of the Earth made available to the public for free in a super easy way, just with our browser. It's useful to compare Sentinel to a Landsat 8 uh, because they're similar in terms of like objectives. Uh, and what we see here, they're the different bands uh, from, uh, from Landsat 8 uh, compared to Sentinel 2. 
um, specific and Landsat 7 as well. Specifically at the top of this figure we have like all the different bands in Sentinel-2 and in the middle we have Landsat 8. Some peculiarities here. So um, we can see how Landsat 8 has some bands that Sentinel-2 doesn't have. So for example the thermal bands, which are the bands 10 and 11, the in red, as well as the panchromatic band, the band number 8. But Sentinel-2 has a better representation of the uh, red edge part of the spectrum with bands um, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8, 8. So this, this portion of the spectrum is much more, much more described, while Landsat has only, uh, has only one band over there. So although the two sensors are quite similar in terms of uh, being multispectral with, the, um, with more or less the same number of bands, the fact that the bands do not overlap, they are different in, in terms of like uh, um, resolution and in terms of like presence in the spectrum, make the two actually quite complementary. So it's good to use Sentinel-2 for some studies and Landsat 8 for some other study. So it's up to the user to decide, uh, you know, which sensor to, uh, to use. So we go back to Sentinel. Uh, Sentinel-3, uh, it's a multispectral and SAR altimeter. Um, man so there are two basically, two basically different technology. Um, the temporal resolution, it's one, two days for the uh, multispectral one with a swath width of um, around 300 kilometers, so it's quite, quite large. We can see application, application written here. So they're all around, uh, for example, uh, screening the ocean and also the land surface to get like information about biology, but also provide reliable information on the atmosphere uh, and the aerosol characterization. Um, the altimeter can be used to study ocean topography, like mean sea level, wave height, wind speed over the surface, ocean currents, and, and so on. So there are, there are quite, quite a lot of applications here that can be you know, triggered with Sentinel-3 data. Sentinel-5P, uh, it's another multispectral data that is used to derive um, atmospheric components, specifically uh, ozone, sulfur dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, uh, methane, and, and, and so on, and formal delight. Um, air quality, generally speaking. Uh, so this is, this is very, very, um, very used to, to derive, to derive, you know, climate change type of uh, type of study forecasting and uh, and so on so they're all products that they actually come directly as uh, you know geolocated uh, version of those specific components <laughs>